I was born into an abusive family. My father was the main abuser, but he is also a child of abuse. And his way of dealing with it was to bury it down, keep it inside, and never talk about it. So that's what tough people do, and that's what strong people do. But it didn't work well for him, because he grew up to become the one person that he never wanted to become, which was his own father. My mother was a very passive woman who stood by her husband, and my two sisters joined with them. I was the only one who spoke up and said that there was something wrong in our family. And I'm pretty sure that's what made me the target. I also look a lot like my father, which I don't think helped me very much. Uh, I started school when I was four years old, and I thought that I would make friends and create a support network, and everything that was happening at home would be okay. But because I'd already learned to be afraid at home, when I went to school, I was bullied from the moment I started all the way through to when I graduated from high school. At age seven, I had a particularly bad beating, and at the end of it, I was laying on the floor, curled up in a ball, and I noticed that my mother and my older sister had been standing there watching. And my older sister walked over to me, and I thought she was going to ask me if I was okay, but she didn't. She told me that I need to learn to shut my mouth because I'm making it worse. And she was right. I could see that when I spoke up, I angered my father more, and the beating did get worse. But I wasn't willing to learn to shut my mouth, but I was willing to take the extra beating. I then got up off the floor and I walked over to my mother, and she got right in my face and she said, there's something wrong with you. What's wrong with you? You were born wrong. This is all your fault. You are the problem. I ran out of our house and I ran down the street and I ran into a park and I sat. And I was rocking back and forth because the noise in my head was screaming so loud that it was deafening. Nobody cares about me. Nobody's going to take care of me. Nobody's going to help me. And at age seven was the first time I contemplated suicide. What am I going to do? How am I going to get through this? I made a promise to myself that I'd make it to the age of 18, because in Australia, 18 is an adult. And when I'm an adult, my life will be mine, and I'll be in charge, and all of this will just go away. So how do I do that? I'm going to have to take care of me. I'm going to have to care about me. I'm going to have to help me. So what do I do? I worked out what I was good at. I was an athletic kid, so I competed in a lot of athletic events and played sports and I would win ribbons and trophies and I would bring them home and I would put them on display so that when things were particularly bad and I was struggling, I could look at them and say, this is me, this is who I am. I'm not this worthless, useless, stupid person my family are trying to tell me I am. I am this, I did this. And it worked well for the most part. I still hadn't uh, made friends and created a support network. I was still my own support network. But at age 15, I was invited to my first high school party, and I was so excited to be invited. But there was a little voice in my head that said, don't go to the party. But I ignored it, and I went to the party. And when I got there, all the other kids were inside, and I didn't go in. I stayed outside, and I paced up and down the driveway. And that little voice in my head grew louder and louder and I paced for longer and longer. So long until some kids actually came outside and they came up to me and they said, don't go inside, they invited you here to humiliate you. Go home. But what am I going to do? I have to get through this. I'm almost 18 years old. I'm almost an adult. Well, at age 17, I actually got my first opportunity to come to America. But the only way I was allowed to go is if I paid for it myself. I had a job since I was 14 years old, so I saved all my money, and I paid for my flights, I paid for my accommodation, and I even organized my own passport. I was so proud of myself, I thought, I'm not even an adult yet, and I'm adulting so well. I am so good at this. And when I got back to Australia, I turned 18 shortly after, and I was like, all right, life is mine now. I'm in charge. What am I going to do next? So I thought, well, the only problem I have from my childhood is that I don't know how to make friends. 
So I'm going to go to university and study performance. I thought, isn't that where all the social outcasts and weirdos go? You know, maybe they're my peoples and maybe I'll learn to make friends. So off I went to university for three years. Uh, I wasn't bullied for three years, which I thought was pretty good. I knew I hadn't fixed anything yet, but I felt like I was on the right path and I was moving forward and I was leaving things behind. So what's my next big move? What am I going to do next? I know, I want to work in television. But how do I do that? I know nobody and nothing. Uh, but I found out I could do volunteer work at a community television station. So I did that and I eventually made my way to one of Australia's major television networks. And when I got there I thought, oh my god, this is fantastic. I need nobody and nothing, and look what I did, look where I am. I am so great at being an adult. I don't know if any of you have ever worked in television before, but it's like being in high school, and I found myself being bullied all over again, except it's not meant to be happening anymore. I'm meant to have left that behind, and I didn't understand why it was happening. What am I going to do? How do I get through this? I know. My next big move is I'm going to move to New York City. If I'm a social outcast and weirdo, surely I'm not going to be the weirdest person in New York. <laughs> and that's entirely true and I'm very happy about that. So I decided that I had to save money to get there and I thought I'll move back to my parents' house to save money for a year. Uh, in hindsight, that was a terrible idea and I clearly had no idea how bad my childhood was. But at the time, I thought it was great, and so I moved back to my parents' house. It was probably one of the hardest years I've ever spent in my life. It did not go well. I found myself being bullied in my job, and now I'm being treated once again the same way I've been treated as a child by my parents. There's something wrong with you. What's wrong with you? Everything is your fault. You are the problem. No, I'm not. You are the problem. No, I'm not. What do I do? I just have to get to New York. So I, I just put my head down and I kept pushing forward and I finally arrived in New York City and I thought, best decision ever. This is fantastic. I thought that I was having the time of my life. I thought that I was having so much fun. I thought that I'd made friends and created a support network. But five years later in 2013, it all came crashing down. And I realized that I wasn't having any fun. I wasn't surrounded by friends and I hadn't created a support network. What I'd done was I recreated the world that I'd come from in Australia. I'd surrounded myself with people who were just like my family, people who did not care about me. And in 2013 is the first time I attempted suicide. It should have worked. I shouldn't be here anymore, but I failed. I was so angry at myself for failing, I thought, maybe I am that worthless and useless person that my family have told me I am. Maybe that is who I am. What am I going to do now? I'm still here. I, I guess I have to do something. So I realized that I really need to stop telling myself that my next big move is what I need to do because it's not helping me anymore and that the only problem I have for my childhood is that I don't know how to make friends. It's not helping me anymore. I need to take a hard and brutal and honest look at myself because there's something very wrong here. And what I came up with was that I realized that I am the problem. I am the problem. And I thought, what am I doing? This is horrible. Why am I telling myself this? I'm the problem? I've been telling myself my whole life that I'm not the problem. Why would I be doing this? And what I realized was that I was doing was I was trying to regain control over myself, regain control over my life. Because if I'm the problem, that I'm the one who's harming myself, and if I'm harming myself, then I can help myself. I'm not the problem that my family have told me I am. I'm not their problem. I am my problem. But I need to flip the script that I've had in my head my whole life, and how do I do that? And I realized that 
my family, they used a tremendous amount of force to harm me. I'm going to have to use that same amount of force to help me. But how do I do that? So I developed what I would like to call the drill sergeant. She was loud, she was aggressive, she was relentless, and she was a powerful force, and she used some colourful language. She wasn't, she wasn't developed to make me feel good. She was developed to drown out the noise, the self-destructive thoughts in my head, and she was really effective. And I realised that at some point she actually started to stop those thoughts. And I thought, this is fantastic. But I had to remember that the drill sergeant was me. This was my voice. I was doing this for myself. And I could hear myself loud and clear. And I had to do that because I wanted to make sure it wasn't my family's voices in my head trying to lull me into a false sense of security like they've done so many times before. And then I started to think if people could hear what was going on in my head right now, they would think I was crazy, which I thought was hilarious. And it made me laugh. And I thought, you know what, I need to learn how to laugh at myself. But at first I thought if I do that, then I'm somehow betraying my experiences. But I'm not. I know them well. What I'm doing is I'm just giving myself another way to think, a lighter and easier way to think. But it was very important that if I was laughing at myself, it had to be funny. I couldn't be hiding behind a sense of humour. I really needed to laugh. And I did. I learned how to laugh at myself, and I love it. I can look back today, and I can see how far I've come. I've still got a ways to go. I am a work in progress, but I can honestly say today that I'm OK. And being OK is the best way I can be. Thank you.